Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel, Mastering the Wedding Photography Biz. I'm Hunter. And I'm Sarah. And if you're watching this video, it might be because you're worried that there's just no more room in your town for another photographer like you. But we are, we know that there's a pretty decent chance that that's just not true. And in this video, we are going to explain why we think that most markets aren't actually saturated what you need to do to stand out in a crowded field and how we've found success even in a busy photography market. So let's jump in. So to start, in case the term saturated is sort of confusing to you in the first place, um, let's talk about it with a more sort of hands-on example. So let's say you're in the kitchen, you're doing some dishes, maybe you're scrubbing on a plate or a bowl or something with a sponge, and then you drop that sponge into a sink that's filled up with water. What happens to the sponge, right? Well, intuitively, you know that it will soak up a ton of water and when you pick it up, it'll be completely filled with water. It just couldn't absorb a single more drop and that is really what it means to be saturated. And while that's like a really great description, what does that mean in a business context? Well, to be in a saturated market means that the area that you serve already has so many other photographers that there is just literally no room for another photography business to come into that area and to be successful. Just like the sponge, your town or your city is already just like so full of photographers that it just can't absorb another drop of photography services. And in most businesses, this really is an important thing to think about. If your town already has, let's say Chick-fil-A, which for you guys who don't have Chick-fil-A, first of all, I'm sorry, it's a fried chicken uh, quick service restaurant. But let's say your town has a Chick-fil-A. Now, if someone else wants to open a second Chick-fil-A on the other side of town, then the people over at Chick-fil-A headquarters are going to look at you know demographic information. They're gonna do some market data. They're going to look at the performance of the first Chick-fil-A. And basically they're gonna to try to figure out if there is room in your town to support a second location. And so in other words, they're sort of sussing out whether or not the market in your town is already saturated for a Chick-fil-A. And if your town is saturated and it couldn't support a second Chick-fil-A, then opening another one would actually lose money for the organization as a whole, because rather than having one successful store, they'd have two mildly successful, mostly unsuccessful ones. But here's the thing, in that same town where maybe Chick-fil-A has decided that it doesn't make sense to open two locations, you might see a Popeyes or a Raising Cane's or a KFC open up a location even though there's already a Chick-fil-A. And that's not because these other fried chicken restaurants, you know, don't have access to that same market data, but it's because they understand that there is always room for a competitor so long as that competitor is different. And that is the key to success in your photography market as well. If you looked around and saw that there were already a bunch of wedding and portrait photography businesses in your town and you tried to start a business that looked just like them, then, I mean, yeah, the market might be saturated. And you're not gonna like, you're not only going to struggle to grow, but much of your growth might be at the expense of the other photographers in your area whose businesses you're just basically copying. But since you are trying to do the exact same thing as them and they're already more established than you, then the only way to beat them is to be cheaper than them. And that's what we would call in the business world a race to the bottom. Mm. That doesn't help anyone to run a profitable and sustainable photography business. However, if you open a photography business that does something totally new or it serves a clientele that's currently being unserved or underserved, or even if you open a business that serves the same clients, but in a way that's different and better than how people are currently doing it, then there's it's almost like there's no such thing as a saturated photography market. That is why during our mindset workshop last month, we identified what's called scarcity mindset, not as a fundamental business threat, but as a limiting belief. Unless you are directly copying an existing business. Or your business is just like every other photography business out there. Yeah, your market is only saturated if you tell yourself that it is and just give up before you even get started. But if you position yourself correctly and uniquely and make sure that you're not just copying everyone else around or, you know, like I said, looking just like everybody else, there's really no such thing as a saturated market. There are only crowded ones. And while it can feel like an impossible task to break into a saturated market, you can always work your way into a crowded one. And here is some other good news. <laughs> Being different from your competition or standing out from them doesn't mean that you have to do something like radically and fundamentally different. Right, you don't need to be the wedding photographer who captures weddings exclusively by strapping a GoPro to your head or you know, only photograph portrait sessions underwater. You don't need to reinvent the wheel to be unique. 
like think about it with our fried chicken example. Like how different is a Kentucky fried chicken from a Popeye's Louisiana kitchen, right? Like at the end of the day, they're fairly similar. A big part of it is about how they position themselves differently. And really what it usually means to stand out is that you just need a strong and unique brand. And okay, what is a brand really? Well, that's such an important and complex question that Sarah and I are actually devoting an entire two hour workshop to the ideas around establishing your own brand and figuring out who your ideal clients are. And this workshop, by the way, is gonna be hosted live next week. And then the replay is gonna be available, you know, basically forever after um, the workshop is actually hosted. And if you are interested in that, um, all the details are uh, in the link in the description below. But the like TLDR <laughs> is that your brand is one of the most important factors when it comes to starting out and finding success in your market, especially in a crowded market. Sure, all you need to start a photography business is a camera and some hustle, but if you wanna grow a profitable and sustainable photography business, then you need to understand what it means to build a brand that both stands out from your competition and makes you and your services seem desirable and attractive to your ideal client. And if you can do that, if you can build a brand that is distinct from your competition and attracts your ideal clients, then you are way more likely to find success basically in any market. Because when you become different enough from your competition, you basically reduce or even eliminate your in competition entirely. Yeah, there's a phrase in modern internet marketing called the riches are in the niches or in the niches, but that doesn't rhyme nearly as well. So we're gonna go with it. Either way, what that means is that niching down or finding a way to brand yourself as distinct from your competition is one of the best things that you can do for growing a successful business. And guys, if you are still early on in your photography business, don't stress if you feel like you don't have a brand yet, right? Sarah and I joke that every photographer and ourselves included, keep in mind, basically started off as a brand that was like, hi, my name is blank and I take pictures. And there wasn't really anything distinguishing or special or, or unique about them. And again, that's fine. But in order to grow past that entry level sort of budget photographer market, branding really is essential. And that's why we've devoted this entire two hour workshop to it. So like we promised at the very start of this video, we thought it might be helpful to share a bit about our own experience in what many would consider to be a saturated market. So right around the time we photographed our first wedding, we decided we wanted to do some market research. And so we were trying to figure out how to price ourselves for future jobs. Um, so we tried to make a list of basically all the other wedding photographers in our city and what they were charging. And while this did help us sort of get an idea on some of our early pricing, it was also really discouraging. And why was it so discouraging? Well, you know, we did a few searches on Google, on social media, and on a few sites like The Knot and Wedding Wire. And before we knew it, we actually had a list of more than 80, like eight zero other photographers who were advertising with Charlottesville as their home market. And guys, we're not talking about like a major regional hub. Like our city has like 45,000 people in it and more than 80 wedding photographers trying to compete for that same market. And so in those early days, we were like, oh, how could we possibly find success in this local market when there are so many other photographers who are already so established and are already charging more than us? Yeah. But despite our initial hesitation, we knew that we really enjoyed wedding photography. So... And we were really naive, so. <laughs> uh, but so we continue to build our business anyway. And what we found was exactly what we have spent this entire video teaching you guys. There is always room for someone who offers something new and different, even in a crowded market. Now, less than seven years after we photographed our first wedding, we are among the top five most successful and in-demand photographers in our area. And we jumped from literally the very bottom, the brand new people on the block and a list of more than 80 photographers to the top 5% of a list that's actually grown now to more than 100 photographers who call our market home over that you know six or seven years. And one of the most important ways that we did that was by establishing an effective and attractive brand, then getting out there and just delivering on our promises. We looked inward, figured out who we really were and who we wanted to serve, and then found a way to turn that into words for our marketing, our website, and our sales. Now, has our photography improved over the last seven years? Like, of course it has but we would probably credit our branding and our marketing more than our photography for our jump from, you know, six or $700 from that first wedding to now more than $10,000 for some of our current wedding packages. So 
again. If you'd like to learn more about how we did this and how you can figure out your own effective and attractive brand, you can click on the link in the description to learn more about our workshop next week, which is all about identifying your brand and your ideal client. And don't forget, tickets to the live workshop, i.e. before the date that is actually hosted, are half off, which is just for a few more days. But the workshop replay will be for sale at that same link long after we've hosted the live event. And we hope to see you guys there. But that's it for this week. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We will be back next week with more great content for photography businesses. But please comment, like, subscribe, all those good algorithm things if you found this video helpful. And don't forget to click the link in the description if you want to learn more about our branding and ideal client workshop. See you next time.